but if you sort of like play it through and i always think about this like other software platforms they're like they're disingenuous in what they're offering like either they're naive or or they're just sort of lying to themselves or they're lying to other people either way like it's wrong Welcome, everybody. I am here with Sean Clark, who, if you don't know, you probably shouldn't be in this group, or maybe just one of the people who joined this group to spam folks, and we end up having to kick you out. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so uh, everybody should know Sean um, and High Level, and and we love them all. And so I asked Sean if he would come in and kind of just give us insight into some of the, the um, cool things that they're excited about. Also, uh, maybe pull back the curtain on some of the huge growth. You guys know this was like last year. I, you know, just re-reported. They have their, you know, uh, PR release on it, but so they've um, been just making major leaps and strides, uh, pulling on so many features. And uh, yeah, so just want to have a little conversation. Thanks for coming on, John. Thanks for having me, man. It's good to be here. Um, well, so let's, let's kick it off with that, which people love. So like, what, what, um, what are you most excited about? I, it probably changes week to week, but what do you guys feel like is up and coming? If this could be staffing, this could be features, this could be, uh, you know, adjustment into our pricing model. I heard you guys are going to cut the price by half. I'm just kidding. Um, ah, ah, <laughs> that's funny. No, no, what, what, no, what are you most um, excited for? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm an engineer. I love, pro I love features. So I'm, I'm probably never going to stop loving features. Um, so, you know, I, I continue to, it's the same lens we've always seen the world through, which is like, how can we help agencies make more money? Um, so, you know, obviously social media posting was out already earlier this quarter. I love that we're adding, you know, LinkedIn and Twitter here shortly. Um, we also have blogging going live um, this quarter, which I think really helps round out the product quite a bit. Um, there's a lot of enhancements, like um, we've got, uh, uh, we've got recurring invoicing going live uh, this quarter, which I think is going to be huge for every agency because a lot of agencies still use uh, you know, kind of a recurring billing model. So I would say all of that is is probably what has me most pumped up uh, more than anything. Yeah, I'll say the the social side of it. Um, I, I have seen a number of folks as an Ascension product. So like if you already have folks that are in it, um, or if you've got an agency model or whatever it is, the idea of social, um, I've been like from our own marketing and anybody who's watching can take this is I, like we say to our clients, uh, we live in an age where people have the lowest attention span, but the biggest appetite. And so the solution is you need frequent small bits of content. Otherwise, you just fade into oblivion. And so the social posting is a great solution to that. And I, I'm mostly excited for when custom values can go in there or we can snapshot content because that I is this that quarter. So that oh, is right. absolutely going to happen. And I am with you. So, I mean, my drive there is we have a huge uh, uh, sort of thing going on in the background here where we're also trying to, we're, we're having content created um, around, we're going to start with social media posting as an example, but really about, it, it's such like a boring idea, but it's like templates, right? So it's like templates for everything in every industry. Like I just want agencies to be able to walk in the door and basically like hit play on on some on like an industry or for a client and get a really good basic rollout across the board, you know, websites, funnels, social media posts, someday Facebook ads maybe, or Google ads, you know, just really give you a good baseline and make it super easy. But on the social media side, being able to like pre-schedule out 500 posts or whatever for the year for your client, it's going to be huge. Oh, oh yeah. And this is the like, everybody's out there, like for easy to deliver agency services, anything in the disconnected marketing space, meaning it's not like a dollar in $5 out. It's like, oh, I got a billboard or like, I got a new logo. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great to deliver on because no, they're like happy because it exists. It's like, it either doesn't exist totally. and then it exists. And you're like winning. And so, um, yeah, we're really excited about that. And we've already had a couple of folks, um, just like pre-offer it. So we, we had somebody, one of our insiders did, a. uh, like a light pitch. And I think 60 folks took it at like an extra 300 bucks a month. And that was hey, like, there the, you go. that's what I see as the, as the bonus price here. Yeah, exactly. That's the model here for me too. It's like, how can you just add a cool 300 bucks a month recurring in, into your business for every client that you ever run into in the future? And that's how you do it. Right. No, it, well, and, and that's what I'm saying. It's not a hard pitch. All these businesses are like, when was the last time you posted on Facebook? And they're like, five years ago, you know, it's right. like the, you know, logo added page created is the last page and, or last post there. So, <laughs> right. um, no, that's, that's exciting. The, um, uh, okay. So let's, um, working with the, the firm, I don't know how hands-on they are. Like you guys had to create a board. Did you have a board before? No, we did not. Okay. So um, you created a board yep. or you're creating a board or you had to have a yeah, board. We've created, you know, it's long been created. Yep. Okay. So what's, 
the for you since you're having now report to a board and go this like what's what's the shift been there good thing cool thing yeah good i mean thing? here's the thing so i was really it was really important to me at the, at the outset that they didn't have a controlling stake which they don't <laughs> and so i don't report to a board that can fire me so that's the most important thing um probably for my own sake more than anybody is but um, but you know what I love loved about it, and I still like about it, is they bring a lot of discipline to the scenario that we just did, didn't naturally ourselves have. You know, everybody has strengths and weaknesses, right? And they bring a lot of discipline, mostly because they're unique in that they have operating partners. So these are like there's a there's a guy there. He uh, he sold his business to IBM for 100 million bucks. Um, you know, and there, there's another guy who who's also been an operator. So they're not like coming in and being like. Hey, I have a finance degree from Harvard and in my Harvard business class, they told me that you should do this, right? Like some nonsense like that. They're like, oh yeah, like here's something that actually worked and I did in real life. And we, so, you know, it's like, so you're really talking to somebody who you can connect with. And so I think they, you know, they ask, and they're really good. I mean, they ask a lot of questions and things. And so it just sort of pushes you to do things maybe that it's not like you're like, oh my God, I've never thought of that my entire life. Um, you guys are such geniuses. It's more like, oh yeah, you know what? I should be doing that and we should put some discipline around that and we should you know spend some time focusing on that and really helping you think about things in a scalable way. So I mean as boring as that sounds I think that's actually what's useful about it. Sort of like saying, "Oh, I go to the gym every day." It's like, "Oh, well shouldn't everybody?" Well, but but nobody does, right? So it's kind of like, you know, it, it's a good thing. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's a cool. Uh, yeah, I think you guys are super agile and very like connected to the customer voice. Um, but yeah, the discipline, that's it's a cool other side of it. So I'm curious, one big shift um, that's honestly been good for us is the elimination of like email ticketing support. But yes. was, was this their kind of uh, vision into there where they're kind of like, hey, no, okay, zero. Um, okay. This, this sort of started with my, so I got started with this because I really, I walked into a Verizon store and I had this really weird experience where one of our high level customers had actually accidentally opened a corporate account using our EIN, just sort of like under his business name, literally just, I think he had read an email or something where he had sort of thought it was his EIN and he just sort of gave it to the person at Verizon and then didn't double check, right? And so it was this like weird, weird, weird situation that took like a week and a half to resolve. But what was great is like every day I could walk into the store and I love this idea that I was like, oh, you know, and I would call the 800 number and I was like, oh, this is terrible. And I waited on hold. So anyways, I was like, oh, let's do that for ourselves, right? And we had such a, such positive feedback from it. We were like, well, you know, the ticketing system sucks because it's so one way and we get tickets all the time. Like, this is broken, fix it. And we're like, uh, what's broken? Can I get a Loom video? Hey, what's your login? You know, it's like all this stuff. And anyways, yeah. so we're like, you know what? We'll just go all live all the time. Because honestly, if we're just saying like, how do we do the best job for the customer? That's how you do it. Like that's what everybody wanted anyways. And yeah. so we just ditched all of it and said, look, let's go 100% live. Could be chat, could be phone call, could be Zoom. Like you choose customer, but yeah. it's all live. So that way we can do a great job for you in the moment. Well, and you're always meeting expectations, right? You walk into the store and there's a line of 20 folks and you're not like, why didn't they get my thing? It's like, because there was a line of 20 folks. You got to sit there and wait through the line of 20 folks. And then if yeah. you're there, like they yeah, can't yeah. do it. So well, it, totally. And that's a very good point, right? It's sort of, it's, it, you know, it's not like I went to the store every day and they were like, oh, I got nothing to do but serve you, Sean. But no, they were like, but it, it was like reasonable, right? It was like no more than 20 minutes or whatever their SLA is. And that's how we can do it too, right? We like, yep. we know that as long, we're not saying like, come here and wait six hours. We're just saying, you know, we're going to manage the SLA, but you're no, you're no, never going to work, wait no, more than 20 minutes or whatever the SLA is. Um, and so you can get help relatively quickly. And I loved it because I was like, hey, how are we looking? They're like, oh, 20 minutes. I'm like, great. I'll go like run to the grocery store and come back. Sure. Um, but my name's already in the list and, you know, I got help when I got help and it, and it was great. So that's yeah. what we wanted to emulate for our customers. Yeah. I, I, I think it's, um, I think it's probably a positive move from the, like ultimately so much of good business is setting and meeting expectations. Totally. I, like, I, I think like Stripe is an interesting model. I go back to because they had for the first few years, no support. They no were support. like, yeah. No, nope, you can use it and it works. And if you've got questions, there's our, you know, library <laughs> and, and right. good, good luck with it. And you're like, <laughs> It scales that side with no support. Obviously, we're fans of support, but the but you know it's really comes down to that. Is if you can set appropriate expectations and meet those, um, you know everyone's generally happier with the experience. And um, so, no, I think that totally makes sense. It's really about scaling a business, and I think the thing that I've learned is that like 
you do the you do the not scalable things up front as much as possible but as you move in as you move, move forward in things where you feel like you have the answers you need to create a scalable model and i think a lot of people will give up sort of spontaneity um to create predict predictability because as they scale their businesses right what they're looking for downline is a predict is predictability for themselves so mm -hmm. they can get predictability to, to their clients and they can create systems around it and so i think it's more important as we go forward like to keep the spontaneity where it makes sense, like on the product side, or I still jump on calls with customers and things like that. But if I'm not around, you know, if I'm like working or something, right, or like in a meeting, it's good to know that you will get served within X amount of time, no, you know, guaranteed. And if we don't hit that guarantee, alarm bells go off and, you know, somebody deals with it. Yeah, no, I love it. I think that makes sense. Um, okay, so in the um I, I get asked this a lot because you guys have shifted like there are big moves happening which i, I yeah, honestly yeah. think have all been good like i see you guys are moving out features more i know you're building out the team more like even the adjustments to here of like creating predictability um but i just want to give a moment to be able to affirm it because i get asked all the time like sure. sean are you going to change your business model like you're you've you've gotten all this money when are you going to start charging us per location oh or we're, we're not that, um, <laughs> You know, but I mean, that was a big part of the, uh, you know, that was a big part of the the deal, um, which was, you know, uh, I didn't want someone to come in and change our business. Well, we had lots of people who wanted to do that. Um, I, I remember one kept asking me, like, how can you just give away your software for free? And I just like heard that a hundred times, like, go away. You're not my peer person. But, you know, at the end of the day, um, we'll, you know, we'll certainly offer more things as we go along. Like, you know, we're going to offer our own hosted um, email and uh, hosted uh, sort of Twilio, right? And we're coming up with pricing around that. And, and you know, and, and so there will, will there definitely be things that you can opt into that, you know, uh, will cost more, but hopefully provide more value or, you know, maybe even be cheaper than what you're already doing. I don't know, but there's never going to be like a, hey, today's the day that you pay X dollars per location just because, right? Like that's not a thing for us. Uh, and that's what I've told folks too, is that like, that makes sense. You need, like you guys deserve and should find a way to increase the lifetime value of us as customers. But like I'll say, like you guys are great examples, like WordPress. It's like you offer this and we're like, oh, this is great. I could pay thousands of dollars a month over here, or I could pay high level who I already know, like, and trust, and it could be bundled in one spot. And so like, am I paying more over the lifetime of being with you guys? Like, yes. Am I unhappy about that? No. And it, it right. Cause you get something you didn't have before, which is, you know, I mean, and, and actually that's the way I think about it. You know, we try in all scenarios to offer a product that is already in the market. And if we're going to charge more for it, it's because either you're paying someone else for it already. And we're, and we're, and we're honestly going to be charging less. Um, right. We try, like, I just, I never think, um, if it's free to us, it's, we try to make it free to you. Right. So like WordPress isn't free to us cause we have to buy servers to do it, but the product we have out today is cheaper than, in my opinion, based on the quality level we've hit, way cheaper than what you'd otherwise pay for it in, in other places, right? And so for me, that's always like the baseline goal. And that's how I judge whether whether we're successful. But like we came out with um, social media posting, right? And we didn't charge a nickel for it. So because from my, my perspective, I mean, yes, we have to maintain it. Yes, we had to develop the software. It wasn't free to create. It's not even free to run. But it, it, it's minimal enough that I just didn't feel like it was worth charging for. So we gave it to everybody for free. Yeah, which makes sense. It's like that action of it sort of lets like it, it sends from here to Facebook and that's the action as opposed to like keeping a site. I mean, so you would think, right? But I mean, I can point you to many publicly <laughs> traded social media posting companies that, you know, do not take that perspective and charge quite a bit and, and make quite a bit. Um, but, you know, I thought, you know, if we can give something to an agency and 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 empower them to create more revenue for themselves. I mean, that's what we're here to do. Yeah, no, I love it. Okay, so um, I think that sounds good. What's, I'm um, trying to think of another question that I always get hit with, um, just so you guys affirm it. That's the big one. Everyone's like, they can't believe the model. Even I like talking to folks, they're coming on and they're like, when is the rug gonna pull? When, you know, and and, and honestly, um, well, this would be interesting. So from, from your guys' perspective, yes, with the partner that you guys now have, yeah. uh -huh. uh, and they're a PE, right? Yeah, private yeah. equity. So yeah, with the private equity firm that you've got behind you, mm -hmm. is their trajectory like another, uh, let's call cash inflow in the next three to five years? Uh, they're, no, I'm not necessarily. I mean, they'll, they, like, I think that what sort of invariably happens, right, is in my opinion, we're sort of like revolutionary what we're doing. And I don't take credit for that. I don't say it lightly, but I also don't take credit full, full credit for it at all. 
I mean, I, I got here with lots of help from lots of people telling me which way to go. And I just sort of, if anything, I take credit for listening, right? But um, ultimately, I think that, you know, walk forward five years. I think that we are the model of the future in our industry. I think we're going to spend the next five years mopping up the competition, be, not because we're smarter or we're better or we're cooler, but because of our model. We partnered with our customer. We're, we're enabling our customer to be successful. And it's not about us. It's not about our logo. It's not about our brand, right? So, um, so ultimately, that model, I think, will be proven. Could I see someone coming in and scooping it up? Absolutely, because I think they're going to think, oh my god, this is amazing, right? But what's really inherently embedded in what we do is our model, right? So tomorrow, if someone comes along and says, okay, well, the, you know, the jig is up, we're going to change all this, it, it would vanish overnight, right? So sure, sure. That, that's what sort of, the, what I love about what we're doing is that we'll never be at risk of the model changing um, because it's worked so well. That, that is why we're valuable. That is why we are different and special. It's not about, I'm an engineer. I love the tech. I love the product. It absolutely has to be there and be spot on. But why we will crush the competition is not because of the tech, it's because of the model. And in fact, we've been sort of uh, recently this last week, we heard some behind the scenes action on the DL from some of our competitors. Um, and well, I don't really think of ourselves having competitors because nobody does the model, but whatever. People sort of in the same space and you know, they're really grappling with how to deal with it, but they're they're kind of stuck because they have these boards and these funding situations and this sort of, even this just, in, forget even the bootstrapped folks, they have like a, a momentum that they can't change because the moment they say, oh, you know what, actually, instead of charging every for every silly account, we're going to go unlimited, they'd be screwed. And so, pardon my French, but I mean, they'd be out of luck. And anyways, I think that that's why we're going to win here because people won't make the jump, even though, quite honestly, it's the better model. Yeah, no, I, I, and I, I see that. I think that makes sense. I, I don't think, and that's why I, I just keep on telling folks, even from the outside looking in, I don't see a way where the model changes. I think it's, it's, you've got a loyal customer base that you continue to solve meaningful problems that are usually no brainer solutions where it's like, oh, I'll pay, I can pay you more money, but it actually means less money out of my pocket. Or like I, another good example of this was like the Yext, where it was like, I'm going to pay you money marginally. However, it's not really a cost center. This is a, a revenue center for, <laughs> for the actual business. Um, but I am curious though, for you guys, the win. So you, you kind of walked around that if I can press a little bit more. So you're saying like, I don't think the model's changing, but is this oh, like- isn't changing. No, well, the, sure. so the model's not changing. Yeah. But is this like, is is the thought for the PE firm like, hey, they're like, we're going public? My camera, goodness oh, gracious. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, this would, be the, this would be the funniest ever, ever. but um, well, it's cool. I just like talk to myself. Um, or the voice behind the curtain. Um, but, uh, but no, I mean, I, I think the, the reality is there's no, so the future is not at all planned, right? So there's like, there's no, there's no finite plan, but could we go public? Absolutely. Um, you know, private equity firms for the record do not invest in people for the fun of it. They'd absolutely do it for, for profit and they will exit at some point, but how they exit, it, you know, and when they exit and all of that is all, uh, all, all up to them. And um, really it doesn't impact what we do because they don't, they don't control us. That's the most important part about the whole point. Like they can decide tomorrow to do lots of stuff, none of which changes what we can or cannot do as a business. We choose that. And right. you know what? They came to us and said, look, we believe in what you're doing. We're, we want to be like in the back seat, you know, along for the ride, right? We get that we don't drive. We're not even in the front seat. Like we don't even get to like try to like grab the steering wheel, right? Like we're sitting in the back seat. So they're pumped to be there. Um, someday, um, would they cash their position out? Probably, I imagine they will. But sure, none sure. of that has anything to do with how we decide to roll. Love it. Um, in a purely hypothetical, if you guys went public, um, would yeah. you would you white label your ticker? Would you would you go like a Google Alphabet sort of thing, or would you guys? <laughs> I, I mean, I I I, I would I would be happy to do that. probably yeah. We'll just do lead connector or something. You know? um, <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Like L D C N. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love that. I mean, I I mean, but you know, again, I. I really, my vision overall is really simple. I want to be a billion dollar company, it, but not because we have a billion in revenue, but because our customers have uh, collectively have a billion dollars in revenue, right? Like I want to measure our success by the success of our customer, right? And I feel like if we do that, we'll be fine. Um, and, and more importantly, we'll, we'll help so many more people that way versus the traditional model of sort of trying to like put your arms around the universe and pull it all in for yourself. I think that's a ridiculous way to do it. Oh, I, I love it. And I, I've told folks too, it is, I don't think, 
I really don't think another model exists where I've seen folks with literally five figure cogs and seven figure like top line. Yeah. Five figure cogs, seven figure top line. And that is because of, of your guys' model, which is yeah. like ridiculous, um, but yeah, equally incredible. But, but I, mean, I think, you know, the fun part about it is like, forget all the financial aspects of it. My original intention was to help small businesses. And it was when I realized agencies are truly the people that do that. That's where like that aha came in. But if you sort of like play it through, and I always think about this, like other software platforms, they're like, they're disingenuous in what they're offering. Like either they're naive or, or they're just sort of lying to themselves or they're lying to other people. Either way, like it's wrong because what they're effectively saying is, listen, these tools, Mr. or Mrs. Small Business Owner, these are destined for you, right? I like, I saw a commercial on TV today for a, a large uh, email marketing provider. And, you know, there's just saying, hey, you know, come on down and buy this stuff. You know, you're going to do great. And I just know how this works. Lots of people see those commercials, they buy the product, and then it sits there and they, you know, they try a couple of things, but, you know, they don't know what works because they're not in the field every day. And really, if you think about it, they're actually in the field doing something else. Mm -hmm. And this is sort of like something they feel like they need to solve for, which they do. But they think that the answer is to do it themselves. And, and, and these TV commercials make it feel like, oh, well, just buy the software and it's all good to that's go. Right. And that's so just exciting. BS nonsense, right? And well, I think that's disingenuous. And the, yeah, I think there's, um, I, I get that, right? And this is the like, the pros and cons of a tool is the perception is if I have the tool, I get the results of someone else who uses the tool. But oftentimes it's in the, it's in the configuration, it's in the setup, it is in the, the person actually wielding it. Um, the, the, in fact, I would say it's always like that. Right. I mean, sort of like the, you know, it's like put me in an F1 race car and just watch me bash the thing into the wall on the first turn or whatever. Right. Like I, it's not going to be pretty and, you know, put that in the hands of the right person and poof, that thing like whips around the track and looks all cool. I, just, I, I will say this is the stuff that I love the most about high level. So for, um, like you said, results to the end business, we, we had someone uh, a couple of months ago on our sales guy was saying he, um, it was, it just missed call text back. That's why like, I love that. Like I, I say all the time for like small businesses, there's, there's really three reasons they aren't like overwhelmed. One, people are looking for them. They don't know they exist. They're not even a contender, right? right. Second, they found them and they don't look so good that you feel silly giving them a call. Reputation handles that, right? Just like ask yeah. people to leave your review. And the third is people found you. They, uh, you looked pretty good or the, everyone else looked bad, equally bad. So they gave you a call and you just don't reply to them. Yeah, you don't pick small, up the phone, nothing small, comes small back. Yeah, been uh -huh. overwhelmed with like cold outreach that their strategy is like, basically they just say, send them to voicemail. And if they really desperately want to give me money, they'll leave me a voicemail and I can follow up with them a few days and that's how I'll get yeah, sales. Right. And so we had somebody, they were like, a, a like it was a contractor, like a, uh, they specialized in like decking. So it was like a deck contractor. Oh, okay. And um, literally the missed call text back, this guy like, this is, had this strategy. Strategy was everything goes to my voicemail. And if they leave me a voicemail, whoop de doo like <laughs> they don't follow them. <laughs> if they don't leave me a voicemail, they were probably like cold calling me, right? Yeah, right. Which They're is not, not the case. Like if you're like, maybe you need work, you just call folks until someone answers. So we turned him his call back and he was like, it was like in a week, he did, we got like $100,000 in deals from no. that shift. And no. that's the thing where it's like, it's unique, but that is like one thing you can, I tell people, like, you can actually set that up and it yeah. keeps on working. High level keeps on working. It's just got the tracking number in there. People call. We already know they're never going to answer, but they'll at least get the text message. So it feels like the conversation oh, gosh, yes. happening. Absolutely. And so, and that's what like delineates for the service provider, for the business owner, who's like, you know, it's, it, they just don't, they miss that people are less likely to leave a voicemail than they are to text, especially when it feels Ooh. like there's a person on the other side. If the person's like, Hey, can't talk right now. Maybe I can help you over text. And yeah. I'm like, Oh, Oh, I wanted a new deck or whatever it was. And so, um, yeah, it, it, most tools aren't so easy. They're like, oh, you just plug it in. It's going to work. But actually a lot of high level, the things that we emphasize for, for biz, small businesses are those things that at least when you like, you set it up and it does work. It's the same thing. You know, we had someone who, um, <laughs> for the QuickBooks integration. I know it's like an early one. It hasn't been looked at for a while, but ironically it works. Like it does actually work for like, you've got a, you know, payment went through and um, it sends yeah, the I review mean, request. That's, that's still our, that's still the one customer that we have that's a small business. It's, you know, the Quick QuickBooks integration was written for them. You know, they cut an invoice and then, you know, a, a review request goes out and it, it rocks. And I think that is the funny part. I mean, I spend a lot of time, we, 
we spend thousands of hours developing these sort of intricate, deep features and all of this, but you know, helping a local small business is not rocket science. It is really like kind of those three things. It's just people like, I feel like people don't like, like you tell them like how easy it is. They just don't believe you. Like they just feel like it's gotta be harder than that. Mm -hmm. And it's not that it can't be, but it's just that if you like really go in and evaluate most small businesses and say like, do they have those three things covered? Like the answer is no, right? Like yeah. I had someone come to me today and ask me at like this intricate re review system where they wanted to like create different offer levels based on actions you would take and all this stuff. And I was like, uh, well, do you do like any of this today? Right? Like, do you, do you have step one? Right. And they're like, oh no, but I saw somebody have this like system that does it. And I'm like, uh, well, why don't you try it? Like try the easy thing first and see what happens. Right. And I know it's going to happen. They're going to be thrilled with the results. They're going to get a ton of reviews and that'll be the end of that. But we just get enamored with these sort of like shiny objects because it's too boring to say like two pointers win the game when, you know, you want to learn how to slam dunk it all the time. No, it's, it is so true. It, well, and so this is like for any, you know, actually I should have said too, if you, you guys have been watching along, um, comment anything it, and it, I'll see, maybe we, we actually already have had some, but if you, you guys tag Sean, he'll probably uh, follow up and respond to anything. Um, if, um, yeah, if you guys have a question, but I, I was just thinking all of us, we just need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. I tell everybody, play an easier game, play an easier game. Too many folks start off trying to play a hard game and they don't have the, the history, the experience, the like the stakes aren't there. Your price isn't, isn't, isn't right. And so um, it becomes exhausting and fatiguing and you don't ultimately, all, there's a lower <clears throat> chance of success playing a hard oh, game. Absolutely. I, th I think that's the assumption. People think, well, it has to be complex and difficult and hard to, to, to be like successful, right? And that's to actually nonsense. It's just not not accurate at all. I mean, you know, my 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 buddy Warren Buffett, he always likes to say, you know, I'd, I'd rather step over three foot, you know, fences and climb seven foot walls. It's just a, you know, it's just easier. And you know, he would say, you know, I just sort of invest in things that make sense to me over time and that kind of thing. And none of those are complex or sophisticated, right? And that's the point because, and that's what makes them sustainable and more likely to be to win and all of that. And you can see lots of other examples, including software, where that is absolutely the case. And I think. If we think about the things, even as, that as consumers that we buy, we tend to buy things that have very little variation because by having less variation, they're more scalable, right? Um, the number of times we buy things that are like sort of custom and bespoke and all of that is almost zero. And when we do, they're more likely to break. They're, they're more likely to cost a lot of money. They're more likely to be things that have these sort of turnoffs. But yet as service providers, we're like, well, of course, that's how you do it. <laughs> right? It's like, of course, the lawyer is giving me unique, special, new advice that they've never given to anyone else before. Like, yeah, whatever. They're just taking the piece of paper out, you know, off the off the Google Drive and just sh sending it over after they do a find and replace on your name and charging you six hours for that, right? Like, but at the end of the day, if what you're getting is a document that's gone through, you know, you know, a bunch of litigation and a lot of experience and it's bulletproof, mm -hmm. you're actually that's getting what you need. Yeah, yep. exactly. You don't want them to start from scratch. No, that's that's a that's a good point. Well, okay, Sean, I um want to be respectful of our time. Um, I I do want to ask you one last question. Yeah, and and feel free, you do not have to answer. Okay, it. I'll be um, ready. So my last question is this: If someone um, because you you've known you guys um on the HL Pro Tools side of stuff. Yep. Um, if someone was on the fence about using HL Pro Tools for white level support, yes, what, what would you tell them? I would say I have never heard anything bad about it. Um, I am a huge fan of um, anybody who wants and needs that type of support. I absolutely would recommend that they get it. Um, you know, and I think HL Pro Tools is a great vendor for that, um, for sure. And in fact, you know, <clears throat> if you're really serious about being a SaaSpreneur, which I hope everyone is, you know, you do, and, and you're on the small side, I think, which many of us are, we, what we want to do, right, is we want to like focus on the most important things first. And trust me, support's important, but it's not the thing that really will define your success or failure. It's really going to be about sales. And so then you should really ask yourself, okay, well, I'm supposed to sell all the time. What the heck gets in my way of that? And you can very quickly add things like setup, support, you know, that kind of thing to the list. And so if you can defray those costs or, or, or pay for them in another way, especially if you can do it um, in a way where you're paying a lot less for that solution than you would have to do for yourself, like that's just a bonus in my opinion and a good thing to do. So yeah, absolutely. Love it. Well, in case it wasn't clear, I also think that high level is not <laughs> no brainer and anyone who's considering, uh, you know, SAS helping small businesses, I think uh, high level is a must. Okay. 
Sean, I'm gonna let you off. Um, but All thanks right, so much friend. for hopping on. And uh, everybody, keep on hitting us up in the in the comments, and we'll be sure to respond to all of it. Thank y'all. Bye for now.